Hi, it is still September, which means that it is still Suicide Prevention Month. And so I wanted to talk about one of the resources that's become readily available for people that is wonderful, which is the crisis helplines that a lot of people uh, post about and just kind of throw out into the void. And I wanted to kind of talk about them today to demystify them for you, to kind of allow you to know, okay, what's gonna happen if I text this number? What's, are, are police gonna come barging in on my door? Am I gonna like, are they gonna call my parents and tell them something like that? I wanted to just tell you from firsthand experience, what happens when you reach out to a crisis helpline? Crisis helplines also, I wanna say, are not just for if you are on the verge of committing the act of suicide. They are purely there for crisis. If you are in a time of crisis, if you struggle with intense anxiety and you are freaking out about something, they're there. If you struggle with eating disorders and you kind of just like wanna get a grasp on it better and you're feeling tempted and your normal support systems aren't there, those helplines are there as well. There's actually a specific one led by the National Eating Disorder Association for America that basically uh, you can call or text, I think it's five days a week or it might be seven. I'm not exactly sure but I'm gonna link it below so you can answer all those questions for yourself but I wanted to talk about exactly what happens when you do call one of these or text them I think it's really cool that uh, we've kind of allowed technology to come into play in this way because I, I know that they are incredibly helpful they've been helpful for me and they've been helpful for other people that I know so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what happens when you text them before I tell you just some background on me I am diagnosed with bipolar type 2 disorder which basically means that I have long periods of depression that are very deep interspersed with periods of hypomania as well as just kind of like you know leveling out and that's what the medication helps with so for me when I've been in my really long dips I have struggled with suicidal ideation and things like that um, and so I wanted to talk about kind of just my own personal experience with these I have an incredible support system behind me of friends and family that I know I can go to but there are also times where you know kind of in my head I'm mentally like I don't want to burden my friends or I don't want to do this or that which is wrong of me because my friends are amazing people who I know I can reach out to but still I'm a human so I'm gonna have those moments of self-doubt and things like that so for me I have done both the call and the text lines different times just kind of different things different levels of severity stuff like that one of the times I was just home alone my roommates were at work and I was just kind of like okay I know that I am not in a safe like mental headspace and I kind of need to have someone just to talk to, to vent to, and to also uh, just kind of hold me accountable. I, I like kind of like a sense of saying like, hey, I'm struggling with this, I wanna do this, but I'm telling you, I'm telling this stranger now so that I am kind of less tempted and I'm more uh, grounded in the moment. So for me, the first one that I ever did was a text line because I was kind of like too scared to call because I was like, there's something about hearing someone's voice or having them hear my voice where I was like, I am not ready for that. Uh, and so I texted a crisis helpline that I'll link below. And within, I think it was like two or three minutes, I had a response from somebody. They were like, hi, my name's such and such. Um, thank you for texting. Like, what's going on? And I immediately just responded. I just said, I am in a really dark place right now. Um, I My depression is just kind of like taking me really low and um, I am struggling with like suicidal ideation and thoughts like that. They then went on to ask me basically like, okay, like where are you right now? And they just had me describe my surroundings. Then they had me describe kind of like what level of safety I thought I was at. Now I do want to say, because I don't want anybody to, um, to reach out to this group and then do something and then you'd be like, well, she lied, she was wrong. Um, I was in a safe place. I was not in a state where I was going to be making any drastic decisions or anything like that. And so I was able to tell them that and that kind of brought the situation down, but it was still something where they wanted to talk me through it. So I just wanted to say that uh, different companies do different things. I know that a lot of uh, hotlines, they will not call the police. It's something where it's like anonymous, but I do know that a lot of them, if you are stating that you are planning to harm yourself or someone else they are legally obligated to call the police or call somebody to basically intercede on your behalf that's a good thing tell them the truth if you are genuinely thinking those thoughts the best thing you can do is tell the truth and I'll talk about later kind of what happens if you um, do come forward and talk about being actively suicidal but basically they texted me and I told them kind of what was going on I told them exactly what I was feeling and it was kind of nice to have a second party that 
literally didn't know me, didn't know anything about my life. And it was kind of nice because it was like, they're impartial. They don't have any biases. They don't know anything about my story. So I'm able to just hit them with where I am in this moment right here, right now. And so I kind of just vented to them, honestly. And they then said, okay, well, what is something that you could do uh, to like minimize that? And of course I was not in the headspace to think of my coping mechanisms that I have been provided by countless therapists. So I was like, I don't know, like I just want to lay here forever and not do anything. And they were like, okay, well, what if you like um let, let's do like deep breathing try this or that and so then the text conversation kind of shifted into coping mechanisms and within about i would say like 20 to 30 minutes like actually no let's say 15 to 20 um i was at a place where i kind of did feel able to calm down and that's something really interesting about being in a moment of crisis in general is that if you are in if you get the help you need if you kind of are able to ground yourself those moments of intense crisis where you're considering doing those severe things are actually a lot shorter than you think they will be you think oh i'm gonna be like this for five days or something and i'm not saying that you won't but i am saying that something about crisis that we need to realize is it's in that moment and so the moment that we are able to step out of that moment and say okay no i am right here like i my feet are on the ground i'm laying on this blanket i am able to breathe i'm able to catch my breath those kinds of things are really crucial because you realize once that moment passes just how critical it is to reach out for help because if i were to make one of those drastic decisions in that moment of crisis i'm making a permanent decision based off of 30 minutes of emotions and so i just wanted to kind of say that in general and i'm going to do a lot more videos just about like suicidal ideation and things like that um but that is the way that the texting crisis helpline kind of works after i was kind of like you know what i actually do feel better which i felt silly admitting because i was very like I think when I'm in that headspace, I'm very like, nothing helps, like everything's dark and grim. But I think that uh, that was actually very nice because I was able to literally just like text and there was something about texting that kind of felt like, oh, I, I don't owe this person anything. They don't owe me anything. They're volunteering. They want to do this. Um, so really the conversation was able to do a lot after about 30 minutes. And then about like 15 minutes after I stopped responding, they just said, okay, like, how are you right now? Le like rate right from one to 10 in terms of crisis. And once I calmed down, I was just like, hey, thank you. I actually am done though. I think I'm good. Um, and from there it was fine. And the conversation ended. I have texted crisis helplines probably like two times now i want to say like two or three um and as for the calling one the calling one is a little bit different just because obviously you're hearing someone's voice and you're having to speak yourself uh for me when i am in a very like bad dip so to speak uh i don't really want to talk very much i don't really want to say much so when i called the helpline and they picked up they were just like okay like what's going on where are you and it was kind of the same questions that the crisis text line was asking um but i was honestly not in a place to want to talk so i just told them that i was just like i don't really want to talk i just kind of need somebody to talk to me um and in that case they really just kind of were like almost I don't want to say that they probably have a, they probably do have a script of sorts. I'm going to be honest. Not every single, they're not going to come in with something individual for each person. They don't know you. They do know how to de-escalate a crisis situation. So when I was talking to them on the phone, they were just kind of like, okay, like let's do some deep breathing, like breathe in, breathe out, recognize that this moment is going to pass, recognize that you have so much ahead of you that you haven't yet seen. You have so much behind you that you've been through and lived through. And from there, they did end up asking me, they're like, okay, like, where do you live? And I was like, I don't feel comfortable saying. And they were like, are you safe? Like, are you safe in this moment? And I was like, yes, I'm safe. Like my roommate's going to be home in like an hour. So like I can hold out till then. And it was just one of those things where really the crisis helplines are to de-escalate the situation, to de-escalate your emotional spike that's happening and to kind of just level you out and allow you to either vent or allow you to just kind of have somebody that's there on the other line of the phone so for me they were both really helpful i do want to say though that nothing is going to replace talking to the people that you know and love i'm fortunate enough to have an amazing support system around me of friends that know me and know my brain and know my language and how i talk and things like that um and nothing is ever going to really replace the people that know you and reaching out to one of your friends but when you're in those moments of crisis sometimes the logical things aren't what you're going to end up doing because they don't make sense in that moment. So I just want to, I just want to kind of like cast this out to say, police aren't going to come barging on your door. They might, I'm not going to, okay, maybe I shouldn't say they won't, but it's not a huge, like, don't think of it as this huge moment and it's this big thing and you're going to be so nervous on the phone call. I just want to demystify it and say it's, it's not, 
it is a big deal. <laughs> it's valid and it's a big deal, but it's actually not that big of a deal to call one of these or to text one of them. I would much rather people overuse these resources than never use them. Uh, and I know that a lot of times some people have had bad experiences with crisis helplines. They've like been put on hold. They've had stuff like that happen. And in that case, if you are in a state of crisis and none of the helplines are picking up, which is pretty rare, but if that is happening, go to the hospital call 911. Those people are trained to handle the situation. It's not going to be this huge thing that blows up in your face and shatters your life. Their sole job is to just keep you safe. That's it. In that moment, the biggest thing is to keep you safe. And I think a couple moments of an awkward phone call are a lot better than a lifetime of regret or a lifetime of pain for the people who love you. So that's all I'm going to say on this matter. I just wanted to kind of make a quick little like one stop video about what that is like. I'm going to link some of the crisis helplines and text lines below. Uh, I don't have all the ones for other countries or anything like that. So if you're in another country, I don't know if I have people in other countries that watch my videos. But regardless, you can Google it. They are always available. Every country has one. Every I think certain states have them. Also, I did want to say too that if you have a friend that is struggling and you're worried about them, I had one of my friends actually call one of the helplines for me. Like, I didn't know that she even did it. She was just like, hey, like, my friend's going through this. Like, what should I do? What can I do? Um, what do you recommend? And they were able to walk her through that. So, helplines are not necessarily only for you. If you have a friend that is struggling, you are welcome to call one too and say, hey, I need some advice. I need to know what to do in this situation. Nothing is going to beat telling a trusted adult if you are underage or if you are in school. Um, but, just know that these helplines are there. They are there to help. So let them help you and just reach out to somebody, anybody, literally anybody. It does, it can be a stranger on the internet. It just literally just even going to someone and just vent, like typing out two paragraphs and sending it to yourself or sending it to a friend and just saying, Hey, literally just like delete, like read this and then delete it. Like, don't worry about it, but just reach out. It is so much better to reach out than to stay bottled up thinking that you can handle it in that moment because i'm sure you can handle it but you don't have to handle it alone and that's all thank you so much for watching feel free to like comment subscribe do you have any experiences calling helplines let the people know that it's not so bad uh, that it's not so terrifying and if you have a bad experience with it that's totally valid too feel free to share maybe give some advice to anybody else that's all for today thanks for watching have a good day i'll see you later i won't see you and you'll just it'll be a video so anyways bye